To talk about all the developments are Anthony Anderson from Republican News Watch and Suzanne Chott from North Central College. Thank you both so much for joining us. Thank, Thank you. you very much for having me. I'm going to start off and I'm going to throw this out and Anthony you can probably answer first. Why has do you feel the president not conceded and do you think he should? Well, I don't think the president has conceded yet because all the votes technically haven't been counted. There are only six states in the union that have certified their ballots so far. So, I mean, we, we have a long way to go in the certification process. And once that's done, absolutely, the president uh, should concede, but not until every vote is counted. Suzanne, according to what we see, there there has no been there's been no proof of voter fraud. Uh, President elect Biden has over 270 electoral votes, so it sounds to me that the race is over. Yes, yeah, so it's you know typically what happens is that even though the states don't all certify the night of, and you know the networks declare a winner when somebody has gone over that 270 after it's been called, um, but because of the mail-in balloting, there's states, many states are taking much longer to get all of those votes counted. And Anthony is right; every single vote should be counted. That's what happens in a democracy. The issue is that of the states that are um, that have not been certified, where they're still counting ballots, there's there's very little chance, if any, that um, that the, the that it will go any differently. And so at this this point, why, why I see why Donald Trump has not conceded by not allowing Vice President, excuse me, President elect Biden and Vice President elect Kamala Harris to move through the transition and get briefings and have access to um, agencies and funds, it delays that transition of power. That's where my concern is. Anthony, uh, Karl Rove, Lindsey Graham, a lot of people are saying, you know, this vote will not be overturned and it's time to move on, release transitional funds. Uh, President elect Joe Biden should be getting daily briefings. Anthony, have we lost you? <laughs> Looks like he has frozen in time. He's looking good. Yeah, I just he think does he's look frozen. Good. Yeah. Well, Suzanne, let's talk while well, we wait for Anthony to become unfrozen. Let's talk a little bit about. Oh, there you are. We missed you. You were frozen. Can you can you repeat what you just said? Yes, I said at, at the very least, the uh, president-elect Biden's administration should get these funds flowing through the GSA so we can have, ensure a smooth transition of power come uh, January. So, yes, I, I'm in absolute agreement that this, these things should happen so we can show the world that our elections are free and uh, free from fraudulent behavior also. Yeah. We are in the middle of a pandemic, yet you have not seen the president come speak publicly since the night of the election in the wee small hours of the morning. Should he be talking about that pandemic? Because it's getting worse across the country. Well, absolutely. The president should, should be talking about the pandemic in addition to uh, any vaccines that are coming forth uh, in, in the near future. So he can assure the American people that there is hope. We have this, this, this pandemic under some control. And so that, that'll be more of an assurance to the American people that the country has this COVID-19 under control. In addition to we can tr the transition team from the president-elect Biden team to from Trump, there could be a smooth uh, smooth cohesion going forward so no one could there be no ambiguity in terms of you know how we deal with this this whole process Suzanne does this look negatively to our country though for him not to come out and say anything what what are his supporters I mean they follow him to the T so this sends a bad message don't you think uh, yeah, thinking about, um, you know, there have been reports, and of course, I know depending on which media you follow, but there have been some pretty significant reports in, in um, fact check media to suggest that the president realizes that there isn't a path forward, but he feels he owes it to those 72 million people who voted to him to put up a fight, a fight that shows that he wants to make sure that um, there are any possible chance that he could win is covered. But at the expense of, as you, to, you, to, to your point, is that we haven't seen him. He hasn't, you know, given any briefings. He did participate in the Veterans Day event yesterday. At Arlington, which I think was really important, but um, it seems that he's just sort of waiting until January 20th when he has very, uh, very, very um, uh, overtly said, and I agree, he is still president until January 20th, and so we need to see him governing. There are, what, some 70 days or so until uh, the inauguration. Anthony, what would you like for him to do during the 70 days, or, you know, what should be done? Should he be speaking more? Well, should he be out more? Should he be making I more decisions, executive orders? What are your thoughts? I think job one would be to, uh, in, in, to tell the American people that our process worked the way it was designed, one. That would bring some closure to this whole process in terms of our elections. Two, the president should sign some sort of stimulus bill to get the economy going and on the right track. 
I just saw reports the other day that Chuck Schumer thought that we should have about a $2.3 trillion stimulus package, pass the stimulus package. And in addition to that, let's, if, if we have to beef up our COVID response to certain areas or, or provide more testing, let's do that for the states. Therefore, the people will see that, hey, listen, uh, the United States is still the United States, the most powerful country on the planet, and we are, we are in charge. We are in charge, and there's going to be a, a seamless transition of power from one to the other. I think the world needs to see that, especially during these times. Suzanne, there's word that he may be pardoning a lot of people, including Jared Kushner's father. His uh, son-in-law and Jared Kushner's father, we know, is in prison. There are words that, uh, that he could be doing a lot of that during this time. Yes. Yeah, so, you know, some of us after uh, after the, the race was called, we were saying that we expected to President Trump to start reorganizing and maybe firing within his cabinet and then issuing some pardons. And we've already seen that this is definitely happening with some of the, the changes in the Department of Defense. And so that seems to be coming true. We know that the president has used pardons before and not unlike other presidents who pardon at the end of their presidencies. I think the thing to watch out for is pardons of his allies, pardons of those who have been close to him, um, which we've already seen him do with Roger Stone. And so um, it wouldn't surprise me if we see a series of pardons um, just based on his behavior previously and his use of them before. And then as a Republican, what would you like to see Joe Biden do in his presidency moving forward or initially? Well, even moving forward or initially, I would, I would hope that the, the, uh, the Biden administration would reach out to certain Republicans because there, there is a difference. I mean, you have to rec he has to recognize that there are 73 million people that did not vote for him. And so he has to reach across that aisle and bridge that gap to say, listen, you may have not voted for me, but I am your president. Mm -hmm. And so I, I understand that you have some concerns, whether it be in education, whether it be in the military. And so let's reach out and let's see if we can agree on some things. I mean, if, even if they can come together on the, on the 80% of the stuff that they do agree with, let's at least agree to say, hey, listen, put some of these, these partisan fights aside especially the fights that we've seen, the divisive fights that we've seen over the past four years. And let's see if we can work on some of the issues and, and, and the problems that face this country today. That's what the American people are looking for today. And Suzanne, we could rewind back four years ago of a lot of people saying that about Donald Trump. Yeah, it does. It's. I mean, I'm nodding to what Anthony said because it sounds great. We we say when a new president comes in, we want them to reach across the aisle. We want bipartisanship. We want compromise. You know, Joe Biden has talked about being a transitional leader and a healer. And I think those words are meaningful if our system of government actually allowed for that. You know, we know that the parties are so far apart. Mitch McConnell has no interest in helping pass any of pres uh, going to be President Biden's agenda, especially if the Republicans hold the Senate, of course, he'd be in charge of that. And so even if Biden does what he does, which is to try to uh, capitalize on existing relationships and build new ones, there's the, there's very little ground for that given our deeply polarized politics right now. And so it's a definite uphill battle for sure. And we do have two elections in Georgia that are going to be uh, runoff elections January 5th that could decide whether the, uh, the Senate is, uh, is equally split down the middle, giving Vice President-elect Kamala Harris the final word. What are your thoughts on that, Anthony? Well, I think it's going to be one of the most promising elections coming up. However, I am sort of... Um, hesitant about what I've been hearing in the news and in the media about certain politicians actually moving to the state of Georgia in order to establish some sort of residency so they can vote in the elections. It's like, come on, guys. It doesn't look good on its, on its face that we have politicians who ran for, for, for president stating that they want to move to Georgia just to uh, vote in an election. But hopefully things will, will come to pass and, and they'll get things together in Georgia. But that is the big balance of power now in Georgia. With those two seats, if, if they go Democrat, um, uh, there'll be a definite change in policy come January 20th. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Suzanne? Yeah. No, I absolutely agree. And, I, and, you know, Anthony's point about Andrew Yang about coming down to Georgia, right? I mean, he has said he's going down there. He wants to help Stacey Abrams organize. Um, I don't know if it, I, I think it's more about that than it would be about voting for him, although if he established uh, voting for, for Warnock and Ossoff, although if he established residency, he could. Um, you know, this this runoff, we're not likely to see it split. We're likely to see, you know, one of the two, two of the same party win or two of the same the other party win. And, and that balance of the Senate is critical. And while there are people who are very concerned about a unified government, 
government, so Congress and the president being controlled by the same party. When it's not controlled by the same party, we see an excessive sometimes use of executive orders. We've seen that across the last two presidencies. And so neither one of those may be the ideal situation, which takes us back to the previous point about the two parties can't get along to get anything exactly. done together. Exactly. Suzanne Chad, Anthony Anderson, thank you both for joining us.